watch out for the rats. They're trying to escape the Academy of Wister and into your houses and everywhere and trying to advance that technology in Rats of Wister. Yes, and hello, my name is Tarrant. <laughs> and it's Stella from Mipu University. The game I picked up from Essen Spiel 2023 and is by Cranial Creation. And yes. it is for one to four players. One yes. of the designers? Yes, it is, is uh, Danilo Savia with Simone Luciani. Simone Luciani. So some of you that have played Simone Luciani's game, maybe, maybe not, doesn't matter, but you can kind of like see how you like his style a little bit, I think. Bit, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's go to it. Let's have a look. So this is a Euro worker placement game. We're playing the roles of rat leaders trying to uh, encourage all the other escaped rats to follow <laughs> us. Basically, we're rats doing cool stuff to try to make ourselves look cool. Uh, the game is played over five rounds. And in each round, we each have three of these meeples. You can see they, I, I keep calling them the milk jugs. They kind of <laughs> look like uh, I actually post, to me. posted on Instagram with Taryn, just like drinking the milk jug like that. <laughs> Full of milk, Taryn. Yes. And what will happen on each turn, you will take a worker and you'll place it on one of these single occupancy spaces and these will flip sides so there'll be more or fewer uh, circles based on your player count. Oops. Or there's one space up here which is the alchemist space where any number can go. So it's got that classic um, competitive worker placement with an all-purpose location. When you go to a space you can, there's two actions that you perform there. You've got the bonus action, which is next to the wheel, and you can do exactly what is printed there. And then you've got the main action, which is one of these six printed around the outside. And you perform the action at the strength based on the number of your uh, rat pieces in that uh, sector of the board. So this sector here, the farm sector, uh, if you've put your mice there, or your um, mice or rat pieces there, they will influence the strengths of these two actions. In this location, I'm influencing the strength of these two, and so on. And that is the major part of the puzzle of this game. You're trying to make, the, make your actions, your main actions, as strong and timely as possible. And when you, how you move and place these, you gain them when you build new bedrooms, which is uh, this action here. You'll, oops, wrong one. You'll be building <laughs> bedrooms at a cost of wood. And when you get them, you can place them in any of the regions. When you take bonus actions with this icon, you can move them. And as you collect movement tokens, which you get for various things, you can also spend those to move them. And so you've got this personal thing going on where you want to try to move them into locations that give you strength, but you're also competing for these action spaces and you have to have the right things in the right places at the right times. And this is, you can see that some of these have fewer spaces than most. So in this round, these two actions are the most competitive, but this wheel rotates at the end of each round. So we didn't actually put the there's a screw, screw there's a screw in there, but then you have to unscrew it when you put it back in the box. I think we missed something. We didn't want I don't to do know. That, so. Yes. <laughs> we do that. So yeah, immediately you can see the uh, the Luciani influence yeah. on that. You've the got rondo, actions yeah. with a wheel that rotate. The strengths of actions are gonna vary based on different things you you've done. You know, last year it was to let them, you had the wheel, it rotated each round and it was how many dice. Now it's how many of your workers. So uh, yeah, very familiar there. So with that, uh, with that in mind, it then becomes a, it's essentially a six action Euro with a card tableau building element to it. So your actions, you've got gain wood, gain metal, uh, spend metal to dig. to dig. So when you dig, you're gonna be creating more space on your player board for square tiles to go into. Uh, there is build beds for wood. That's how you build the room. 
build the rooms and get more uh, mice that you can place down. Digging and building is all going to score points. The more you do it, the more points you're going to get. You've got light bulbs. So light bulbs let you take the invention card. You'll see there's all these little uh, cute rat inventions made of so either cute. wood or metal. And there's one light bulb and two light bulb ones. So uh, it's a, a constant play of trying to get the cards which are going to combo well for your strategy. You put them into your hand. And playing the cards. Playing the cards is a big kind of tableau uh, optimization type of thing. So if we look at some of these cards, they all cost wood and or metal. Uh, many of them require you to have certain icons on previous cards. Uh, sometimes they require you to have the electricity token, which we've gotten through various means. So you're building up a whole lot of things and then these can give you passive abilities or immediate abilities, all sorts of stuff. And game bonus, mm. once off per round and so on. Yeah. Yep, but you need one of these play icons to do it so they come into pretty high demand. And then the last action is to go exploring the house. And uh, each step of action you get lets you unlock a door or move into a room or reveal one of these missions. These become common missions that everyone can complete. Uh, but anyone who's opening doors or revealing stuff is getting bonuses mm. for it. These weren't there before. It magically appeared because we forgot to put it there. Mm. <laughs> and this room, you see this uh, varies for player count. So like, this room is only used at four players. Uh, there are these guest mouse tokens. These are things that you can pick up randomly uh, if you're in the room. I would have to have gone down here. But and open the doors. <laughs> yep, so that can put you into, uh, give you other bonuses. There's some cheese at the end, which is worth points. So, yeah, another, another big uh, element there. These missions, which I pointed out before, this is a big engine building side. There's another specific icon that lets you complete a mission. And for that, you're taking cubes off your player board, weak ones or strong ones for the uh, upstairs of the basement. And these will give you engine building powers or points and so on. There are some common objectives here that you'll be chasing after as well. Uh, you know, in this one, this icon or digging or getting this icon is going to be worth points. Everyone can get them, but they get harder to get the more you go along. Uh, so it, it's good. There's a lot of little timing elements in it like that. Yes, indeed. Um, end of the round. Uh, um, it's, a, it's a turn order game. So you will have your position in turn order. If you're late in turn order, you really do lose the, the valuable oh, actions yeah. there. Hit so back one. Yep, so when you go up to that all-purpose space, that also serves mm -hmm. as a turn order modifier. Well, we're missing one rat anyways. <laughs> yes, over to the side. So, yeah, that is the, that is the spirit of the game. There's, there's not a lot of game-breaking stuff. Most things you're going to do uh, individually cap out at like five or six, maybe seven points. Uh, but you need to optimally get a whole lot of those to try to score as many points as you can. Engine build is the key, and it's just, just so many that you can do a bit of engine building, a bit of tableau building. These cards, if you combo them well with completing missions, it could just, I've seen somebody done that. Uh, I think one of our friends just built the engine, just trying to milk it as much as possible, getting lots of points. He ended up winning like ahead, way ahead of everyone. Yeah. So you see, this engine building so if well kind of like not engine building but specialization so this is also engine build you put more of this there but and this is also worth points at the end if you push on that you get 16 points you keep digging you have to actually balance it as well you can't just but oh maybe you can i've seen that happening also more specialization if you don't generalize and this one if you build so if you dig all of them gives you 15 points and as Taryn say, this will be, if it's off, this is a bit of engine building and you can see there's a bit of point as well for the taking. Yeah. You can explore with this action everywhere and then gaining bonus. When you flip it, you gain bonus. When you go through a door and it's an action, but you get the bonus, surprise bonus for the door. And there's, there are also cards that gives you end game points if you collect the doors, for example. Yep. So you explore everywhere. Yep, here's one that's worth uh, more points each time you dig. Yes. 
So there's just these things that kind of like drive your strategy and then you can't possibly do whatever all the things that you want. You can't possibly do this. If you do this, I think, all of them, and then you probably abandon these collecting collecting cards. Yeah, it seems to be pretty well timed. Five round game. Uh, it's enough time to max out one or two things. Not enough time to do everything. So yeah. you've got to, to pick and choose. And again, really time it based on what actions you're going to be able to take. This is really tight as well. And it moves every round. It's like this one. And then you move here. And then, like, oh no, now kind of like the bonus, I mean, the main action stays. It's just the bonus that actually, sorry, the bonus moving. Yeah. Um, and then you have to just, there are ways to move your little minions, like this one, move move them here, move them here, uh, but, you know, it's, it's limited, it's very limited, it's really tough to do, you have the tokens that you can spend, but yep. it's sometimes yep. hard to come by as well. Yep, and there is one upgrade which doubles the effectiveness of those as well, right. I quite like that, because yes. it gives you, it gives you one... Yeah, th there's good variety in these. One yeah. of them gives you a way to really play the, the wheel. Uh, some of them give you cheaper ways to do digging, so you don't have to do that action and as building. many times to achieve what you want. Uh, some of them give you cards and extra actions and things that combo up your icons to really work the, um, work the tablets. There's extra, extra space as well to build your, build your rooms. Yep, if you don't want to dig, you can just create one this way. Gives you just that little bit of extra space. There is, I think I've seen at least one card that gives you an extra room that you can place on the side. Oh, yep. it's extra rooms if you don't want to dig. So maybe there is a, a way of specialization more. It probably is wax for, for the point. But anyways, playing not just about winning, right? It's about playing. Yep. And there are so many things you can do, so many different strategies you can do. And it feels like everything is smooth to me with really, really little action. It's like three worker placement per round times five. Yep. I don't know. I always like games with more action, but I think it might actually be just enough. Just enough, it stops just when you somebody's going to get away with engine build. Yeah, it stops before you can do everything. I think that's important. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, <clears throat> I enjoy this game. I mean, Teletum was... I come... You know, we mentioned Teletum before. It was a very uh, highly rated game for both of us last year. And... Uh, this very much does have that feel because on this board it is, it's tight. You need to take, if you need a certain main action, you've got to take it. And although it's, you know, placing workers on dots instead of taking dice out of a pool, it's pretty much the same thing because the number of dice of each color is going to vary based on how much you drew out of the bag. So this is actually a very it looks slightly different. It's a very similar mechanism. And it is, you know, there is fear. You know that, particularly if you're in one of these ones that doesn't have very many spaces, you know there is the fear that someone's going to take that action that you need. And the timing is even more critical than it was in Teletum because you have to have these workers in the right place. If you really need to take an action and then move your workers around, uh, you've got to get in there and get it sooner, and then it's got an aggressive mm -hmm. turn order thing. So yes. it's perhaps even tighter from that standpoint than it's, to let them was. It's true. It's really tight. Because if you don't have a worker like this, then you don't get to do it at all. You mm -hmm. need at least one worker to do one action, one weak action. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's zero action. You don't get any metals here. Mm -hmm. And the rest of everything else, it does have that, it has a similar sort of feel because you actually do kind of have those four or five standard Euro sorts of things to do, and you're kind of doing this bit by yourself. Um, so that, that likewise is a very Teletomy feel. Let's spend a little bit of time, a few seconds, to look at the components. The first time I saw, oh, is that a root? Like, no, it's not root. Is it bread? No, it's not bread. It's, <laughs> it is nice, mice, rats. Mice, rats, rats of wisdom, so rats really. It looks so cute. Look, wee. it's a very chunky, nice component. Yep. The milk jug, as Taryn said, milk jug. <laughs> and the artwork is really good. Yeah, you I like mentioned the, it I like the well. artwork. It's got this nice sort of vibrant, bright, cartoony style. Yeah. Um, it it belies the complexity of the game, I yeah. guess. It, it, uh, 
But look it's got that nice style. Like, look at the room, like this cartoony style. Yep. The uh, a room to explore. It's very thematic to the rats. Like we're exploring this uh, this house. That book bookcase is hiding something, and then that's the mission that you you do. A very thematic one as well. Yep, and the inventions. Yeah, it kind of brings you back to woodcraft from last year in the way that they're all these cute little things made of wood and metal. Look, cat. Uh, I really want to show where is that? Oh, it'll be on the other one. The extra room with snails. So you actually having a room in the snail or something like that? It's really yeah, cute. Let's see if I can see. find that. Is it over there? Robot oh, snail. There it is. Robot snail. So it's an extra room, and you're actually staying inside the robot snail. It's so cute. <laughs> it's the cutest. Sorry, I, I didn't like. I didn't put it back to where it was meant to be flipped down. Yeah. So many things you can do. Uh, this is actually the hardest one, right? You go, you have to go all the way down to reveal. Yep. Yep. And this is better value or harder to achieve these missions, but better reward. And if you're able to combo something, it's just, you know, that's how you win. But that's like any other game, right? Yep. If there is one downside, I suppose it is that as you, most of the things are going to get more powerful as you get more of them. So as you fold into your strategy and you have uh, really committed to which of the three or four things you're going to do, it becomes a lot easier to predict what players are going to do and um, perhaps this gets less cutthroat in the final rounds. If you specialise. Yeah, once everyone's specialised. Um, Unit competition. <laughs> Yeah, I think, and I mean, maybe that happens in maybe that happens in a lot of games as yeah. well. Which is something I've uh, noticed coming into the ends is that if you're if you are doing a strategy of your own, you do get pretty well free reign on it. Yeah. Because ne you never quite get to the point of generalizing. the The end is not very general. I yeah. think. Um, That's right. So we're looking at the three player setup here. And this is two to three players, and this is four players. So yeah. there are obviously more bonus spaces for higher player counts. I think it's just the right of tightness there. Yeah. Like, you can say, all right, let's say you're two players. Let's just pretend it's two players. How does it play with two players? So all these are for two players. What is this? Is this like the same, the same? And this one as well, because there would never be a need for three. Yeah. So how many action spaces are there? So there's nine out there overall, mm -hmm. uh, four plus the alchemist space for six uh, milk jugs. So uh, there are three left behind. Yep. If you are to play three players, let's, sorry Taryn, I should have like got, gone the other way. Sorry, let's say four players. This is four players. Yep. So this is staying. I just knocked everything over. Yep, so four players you end up with, that's 14 plus there. So mm -hmm. for 12... Uh, for 12 meeples, 14 spaces, it gets quite tight. And you really do see uh, the benefit of, if you're getting low in turn order, it really, really is a tight decision more. to take this weaker action uh, to jump ahead and get better choice in the next round. And I, I like when that is a decision point as mm. well. You need to be punished. Shh. Not really. It's not like that at all. Beep. Uh, this is, no, this is a really good game. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is... If you, if you like things to be tight, if you like to have to work for your actions and do personal planning to think ahead for this, because it, it really does hybridize the, uh, a bit of the old school tight worker placement with a bit of the newer, yes. um, the newer solitaire tracks yeah. and things in quite a nice graphical form. Speaking about planning, you could have planned ahead and then all of a sudden, or you could have have all your you know minions in here and all of a sudden somebody takes the last action on that spot like that's it you go and you're like uh a little bit ap i have to redo my turn but then there's not really a lot of spots left so you just like but you still have to rethink your turn when that happens which has happened yeah and that can get brutal especially you get down so you get down to two players <laughs> and you see that someone has pushed everything into one location yeah. in preparation for the next round yes that's where you can really go in and mess them up. Yeah, um, you should. You should. As probably. always, <laughs> harder to do at higher player counts because that might not be the action you want. But it has happened. Yeah. Remember that one time mm -hmm. where I put all of my mouse there. I should say rats. Hang on, the minions. Let's say minions. Brad, 
bread rat. <laughs> there. Oh, yes. Bread rat. Sorry, because it looks like bread. It What's does. a bread? Yes. Like a bread? Like... Uh, it's a pun? Anyways, uh, this rat's in there, and then all of a sudden somebody took the last two turns because I did the last two spots. Nothing else I can do there. Yeah. It's so sad. We both enjoyed this game, right? No, I we yes, that very much so. Now I feel like eating cheese. Cheese six and three. Well, this is for three and four players only. First one to get there, get the cheese. But, you know, I thought that was six, but then there's so many other points you can get from. So before I will show you more close-up of the components and the cards, thank you so much for watching. Hit like and comments if you have any questions. Subscribe if you want to see more videos. And have a great day. Bye.